Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we need some partnership there. Shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Morning Inspiration. Before we go any further, let's set the atmosphere. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Father God, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins and give me what to say to these, your precious people. In the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Today's topic is, it's later than you think. It's later than you think. And we will be reading, for your hearing, uh, 2 Peter, the third chapter. We're going to do a little reading today, uh, 1 through 14. Okay, and it reads as this. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. And you've often heard me say, I am just trying to stir up your pure minds. I borrow that saying from the late Bishop King, and you see it is biblical right here, because it says, this, uh, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Now, this is a letter written by Peter. We know that Peter was very passionate. He was the disciple that sometimes let his passion get the best of him. But we see now a seasoned Peter who is writing something to stir up their pure minds. The the may the, the, the topic of this in the in, in the Bible that I'm using, this is King James Version. This is uh um this is the Life Application Study Bible, because I didn't want to get it wrong. Um, the main title over this is Hope for Growing Christians, but the topic that I chose to use today is It's Later Than You Think. Um, let's read a little more, and then we're going to come back to that, that topic, It's Later Than You Think. So let's build on this. Um, the second verse says that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Now, we see right here, Peter is letting you know that you need to be mindful of the words which were already spoken. We have the written word of God right here, the Bible. So he says, be, be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. So he puts, he, he really lets you know that every prophet is not holy. Now, I'm not out here to throw stones, but he said holy prophet. Some people are in some people are prophets for money. Some people are ministers for money. It's a lot of that that goes on. That goes on anywhere, okay? Some people have the wrong intention for doing what they're doing, okay? So we're going to just park right there. But he says the holy prophets. Then he goes on and says the apostles of, the Lord, of our Lord and Savior. This is Jesus, the apostles. The, he's referring to the 12 which Jesus had picked. That's what Peter is saying right here. Okay? Moving down to the third verse. It says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Scoffers, they think everything is, you know, a joke. People are so sarcastic now. Oh, you know, Jesus isn't going to return because, look, you know, it's, it's the same as it always has been, you know? And I'm going to just keep doing me. I got my truth. I got what I'm going to do. But let's, let's really park right there. It's later than you think. People don't love the way they used to love. I haven't been here that long. 52 years is not that long. Okay? And I see a big shift in the way people treated each other 52 years ago. Well, not quite. I don't remember exactly 52. So let's say I see a big shift in the way people interacted 40 years ago. Okay? to the way they interact now. I see a big shift in the way family, the family dynamic was 40 years ago to the way the family dynamic is now. I see a big shift in the way children interact with their parents 40 years ago to the way they interact now. It's later than you think. I see that it's not that, that big of a, 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 of, of a you know, priority for our soul. Our soul is an eternal. And that's not prioritized. We have 401ks that we're prioritizing. We have promotions that we're working on, be it in the, the, the you know, be it in 
corporate America, be it in um, be it in, in various you know church church realms or whatever. We are occupied with a lot of things except what we need to be occupied with. What do we need to be occupied with? If you found out right now, you have one hour before Jesus returns. You got one hour to get everything right. What type of prayer would you pray? What would you do? Would you be worrying about how much uh, your stock is going up? Would you be worrying about what type of outfit you have? Or would you really be praying to, to, to let heaven know that you're serious and you're sorry? Would you go out and would you try to witness and win some souls? What would you do if you had one hour left to live? Okay, it's later than you think. Let's keep going. And, okay, let's read three again. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. And when they refer to the last days, they refer, this is referring to the time when Jesus ascended. So this is between his first coming and the second coming. So yes, we are in the last days. We, we don't have to sit there and say, well, I mean, how do you calculate the last days? God bless you and good morning, Sister Hemphill. We are talking about the last, it's, it's later than you think. And we're talking about, um, we're in 2 Peter, the third chapter, and we're reading 1 through 14. Right now we're on verses 3 and 4. So it says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, and I define the last day, which is the time between the second, between the, between the first coming and the second coming. So right now, we're right after Jesus already ascended and he said he would return. So we are in the last days. Okay. It says in the last days, scoffers walking after their own lust. Okay. If it feels good, I'm going to do it. Guess what? I, I, this is all about me. I don't care about you. I'm going to worry about me. Okay. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. So in other words, guess what? A whole lot of generations have died. And guess what? You know what? Things are still the same, but they're not the same. I challenge you to say things are the same. If you can just go ahead and go back in your life. I went back in my life. I said 52 years is not a long time. So guess what? I'm going to say going back 40 years where I was 12 years old. I had, you know, some reasoning ability. Okay, and I could see the way people interacted then versus now. God bless you, Brother Meshach. And, and that's what it comes down to. It's later than we think. Okay, what would you do? I, I, and I'll, I'll ask this again. What would you do if you knew you had one hour before Jesus returned? You had one hour. What would you do? I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be doing what we normally do. I'm pretty sure we wouldn't get up and just get our morning coffee Maybe watch the news, maybe check some email. You know, I'm pretty sure that's not what we would do. Okay? So we have to redeem the time. The Bible tells us about redeeming the time. How do you redeem the time? You redeem the time by being about your father's business. And I'm not talking about your natural father, I'm talking about your heavenly father. Okay? Your natural father is limited. Okay? My natural father has already passed, but he was limited. He had limited resources. And he was limited in what he could and could not do. Okay? But I'm talking about our Heavenly Father that is not limited. The only limits that our Heavenly Father has is the limits that we put on him by unbelief. The limits we put on him by leaning to our own understanding. That is the only limit that God has. Okay? So we're going a little further. It says, For they willingly are ignorant, of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the, the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Now they're talking about the first judgment. The first judgment was by water. That's when it was the flood. That was the first judgment. So guess what? It's not going to be water again. God already said that when he put the rainbow in the sky. All you got to do is read the story of Noah when he put the rainbow up there. We know right now the rainbow stands for something different, but that's not what God put the rainbow up there for. The rainbow is a covenant between God and man that he will not destroy the earth again by water. Go ahead and look it up. 
okay, rainbow is not, hey, this is everybody, we're inclusive, this is what, no, 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 that's not what the rainbow is for. The rainbow is a covenant. It's a holy covenant. God said, I'm laying down my bow. In other words, I'm not going to destroy the earth again by water. So we know that if he said he's not going to destroy it again by water, he didn't say he wasn't going to destroy it again. He said, I will not destroy it again by water. So there we go. That is the rainbow. So the first judgment was water. The second judgment will be fire. Okay, and it's not going to be just a little wildfire like they have going on in the, Cal in the state of California. It's not going to be wildfires like that. No, this will be, let's read a little further. We'll see exactly what it'll be because I don't want to get ahead of myself. But the first time that the world was destroyed, it was by water. The second time is going to be fire. And when you think about fire, you do something with fire when you're taking a precious metal. You burn off the impurities with that. Okay, let's look at our world right now. It's a lot of impurity. It's racism is rampant. It's, a, it's been rampant. And guess what? People who want to try to justify that, they're as sick as the problem itself. Okay, and, I, and that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to sit there and name various people, but you, but you know if somebody makes a statement and just looks like, well, very unapolog unapologetic. Oh, well, that's just the way it is. Or, you know, hey, this, that, and the other. I mean, come on. Come on. It is it's, it's, it's very sad now. We're in a very sad state, okay? Where, you know what? Human life means nothing. That's sad. That's very sad. And that's very troubling, okay? But it's later than you think. Are we, they call ourselves Christians. Are we doing what we should do? Are we witnessing? When was the last time you witnessed? Hey, you know what? It's later than you think. Hey, Jesus saved. When was the last time you bothered to do that? When was the last time? You got out of your comfort zone to try to witness to somebody who has not, not just heading to hell, but is going to hell first class. They, they, they're not going economy. They're going first class. When is the last time we witnessed? When is the last time we let our light shine? Okay? When is the last time we said, you know what? I don't care if this person has a sign up in his yard that they support a certain party. I, they have a soul. When's the last time we tried to really witness to them? When's the last time we had a conversation and said, hey, I don't want to talk to you about politics. I want to talk to you about something more important than that. Oh, what could be more important than that? Your soul. That's what's more important than politics. You have an eternal soul. You have an eternal destination. It is later than we think. Okay, let's keep going. It says, um, but beloved, be not ignorant. Of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So when we're looking at this, we view time differently than God views time. See, we know that we have so many, many moments, so many seconds, so many years to live. But God is eternal. He's outside of time. He can see when we were born and look at where we are right now. All in the same instance, okay? That's what's so great and what's so awesome about God. God, time does not apply to God. We are bound by time. God is timeless, okay? He's in eternity. He's in the past. He's in the present. He's in the right now. He's in the future. Past, present, and future. God exists in all of them. We don't. We exist right now. This is the present me. The past me, I can't go back and pull him and have a conversation with him. Because if I could, I would tell, the, I would tell my past self some things that, hey, you don't do this, okay? Hey, this is what we look like now because of some of the decisions you made, okay? That's what I would do. But guess what? We can't do that, okay? It's a lot of movies made about, oh, I'm going to go back in time. No, we can't go back in time. We can move forward. That's why it tells us we have to redeem the time. It tells us about we press towards the mark. In other words, we're constantly going forward. Guess what? I can't do anything about what I did yesterday. I can't do anything about what I did 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. I, that's in the past. I should have learned something from it. I should be repentant if I did something that was wrong to somebody. I should have asked for forgiveness of them and God, but I can't go back and relive that moment. I can't go back and change things like that. I can't do that. We have to move forward. We have to realize it's later than we think. And the older we get, the more we realize, guess what? I have 
less time in front of me than I have behind me. Because right now, I've lived 52 years. Am I going to make it to 104? I don't know. Okay? But the likelihood of me doing that is not very high. The likelihood of me living to 120 is not very high. So it's safe to say that I have less in front of me than I have behind me. So guess what? I need to realize that it's later than you think. I need to redeem the time. The Bible lets us know that for God so loved the world. I see you, Brother Meshach, 40 years ago. Yes, I can go back 40 years ago when I was 12. Okay? That's how quick it goes. You think something, I mean, I couldn't wait to turn 25. Then all of a sudden, 25 was 35. 35 was 45. And I'm about to be, if Lord Delay is coming, give me three more years, I'll be 55. Okay? That's what's so, so crazy. We have to redeem the time. This is serious. Yes, it is. And all we need to do is we need to let our light so shine. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then we see right here where it says, um, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's letting you know why Jesus hasn't come back yet. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he goes beyond just that. He's giving us time. Time to get out there and witness. Time to get out there and get some of these little things right with what we're doing. Time to go ahead and guess what? That attitude that I got. Guess what? I got to go ahead and I got to submit that. Oh, you know what? I got a little temper. That's just part of me. You know, that's part of who I am. No, you need to let that not be part of who you are, okay? It's later than you think, okay? God is giving us time. Time is something that we don't have an unlimited amount of. Guess what? We have a definite amount of time. Our hearts are, 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 are built to beat a certain amount of years, okay? I don't care how much you diet. I don't care how much you work out. I don't care what you eat. You're not going to stay here for 200 years, okay? So I can sit there and not eat McDonald's. I can sit here and not eat bad. I can uh, cut all my sugar out and, and limit my wheat and all that. Uh, that. That doesn't matter. You have a definite start time and a definite end time. You were born on a certain day and you're going to die on a certain day. You don't know what that day is. You didn't even know when you were born. Nobody can sit here and honestly say on this Facebook Live that when they were born, yeah, I knew what day it was. It was a Sunday. You were told it was a Sunday. The only time you know that is when you got old enough to look at your birth certificate and say, oh, I was born at this time. I mean, right now, if you just had to answer right now, you can't say what time of the day you were born unless your mother told you or you looked at your birth certificate recently. You don't know what time you were born. You don't remember anything. You don't really remember anything until you were about five, maybe six years old. All the other stuff is just like, hey, you were just here. Okay? So let's keep going. Okay? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Fervent is intense. It's going to melt with intense. So guess what? I don't care what type of fire gear you got. Oh, I got some gear that's up, up to... Can you go... Jumping some lava with that gear? No, you cannot. So guess what? If it's fervent heat, it's going to be hotter than the lava. So guess what? What are you going to do? There was a song. What are you going to do when the world is on fire? Where are you going to run to? It ain't nowhere you can run. Because guess what? Everything's melting up under you. So what, what you going to do? Okay? We have a chance right now to go ahead and make our reservations. We have a chance right now to live our life so that God can use us. We have a chance right now to live a life where people can see Christ in us. Okay, they don't need to just see Robert in me. They need to see Christ in me. Robert should be very far down there. So after they peel away and, and keep digging, digging to the Christ, then they should see Robert behind the Christ. That's what they should see. Okay, so let's go a little further. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversations and godliness? Woo! So, what 
type of person should we be? We should be a caring person. We should be a person that is not getting caught up in what, and, and when I'm saying this, I'm not trying to minimum, I'm not trying to, 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 to minimize the racism, racism that's going on. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. Okay. We have to keep being about our father's business. That's what we have to do because this is temporary. I know it hurts. It hurts when we see people who look like us that are being killed just because of the color of their skin. It does hurt. It hurts a lot. And the thing is, we just have to go ahead and that's where faith comes in. We have to say, you know what? I have faith that God knows what I'm going through. I have faith that me believing in God, I have faith in my prayers, I have faith that the work that I'm doing is not in vain. Because we're going to go to a place where there won't be any racism. We're going to go to a place where there is only justice because God is a just God. So we don't need to say just ice, just. God is just all by himself. We'll go to a place where, guess what? We will be known as, you know, he'll know us. He already knows us because he said in Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That's where I want to go. I want to go to the place where the great I am, the creator who made me, who knew me before I knew myself, who knows how many hairs I still have up here. He know how many, he knew how many I had at the beginning and he knows the number right now. Okay. Who knows how many, you know, particles of sand are on the beach. The one who loved us so much even when we were unlovely, in, even when we were unlovable, who gave his only begotten son to die for us. That's the person I want to see. I want to see Jesus, the one who died for me. I want to see Jesus. And I don't care, you know, how they depicted him because he doesn't look how they, draw, how they drew him. You can get a good idea of what Jesus looked like by reading the Bible, Okay. He was not, he didn't have blonde hair and he did not have blue eyes. That does not line up with the Bible. I'll just say that, okay? It said, that's who I want to see. I want to see Jesus. I want to hug Jesus. I want to say thank you, Jesus. And just, just embrace him for a moment. And I don't know how long that'll be. I, you know, but when I see Jesus, that's what I want to see. I want to see the one who constantly pleaded with the Father when I was being crazy. The one who pleads with the Father when I make a statement that's not lining up with God's word. The one who pleads with the Father when I'm not being the priest of my home that I should be. The one who pleads with the Father when I'm not loving on my wife like I should be. The one who pleads with the Father when I'm not being the Father I should be. When I see Jesus, that's, that's, that's what I want to see. That's what the goal should be for all of us, to see Jesus. And not just see him when he says, depart from me, I never knew you. We want to hear well done, thy good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear well done, Elder Wyatt. I just want to hear well done, thy good and faithful servant. You don't even have to call me Robert. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Because you're going to give me a new name anyway. That's in Revelations. I'm going to get a new name. So whatever name that is, that name is going to describe me to the, to the T. That's what I'm waiting to see. That's what I have faith in. That's what I'm pressing towards. That's what I can't get weary in well-doing for, okay? So we're going a little further, okay? Let's, 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 let's pause on We're on 10 right now. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So we know good and well now with the, the society we live in, we think we're prepared for anything. Well, I got ADT and I'm good. But guess what? The thief knows when to come and get you. So that's what it's saying. You're not aware of when the thief comes in. Nobody is sitting up all night with some coffee. Well, I know the thief is coming on Wednesday. So guess what? I drank me a couple Starbucks. I got an extra shot of, uh, of espresso, and I'm ready. I got my ADT on. I got, I got, you know, a weapon, and they can only come in this way, and when they come in, it's going to go like that. No, 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 no. We don't know how, because that's what they do. A thief is a thief because he knows how to get in and how to catch you unaware. So it's saying that the day of the Lord is coming the same way. So when people say, oh, I know Jesus is coming in October. Something special happened in October. Yeah, you know what's happening in October? It's October. Okay, you don't know when he's coming. So we need not embrace that type of foolishness. But what we can do is we can redeem the time by studying our word. 
The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, that you can rightly divide the word of truth. That's what we have a problem with right now. A lot of people don't rightly divide the word of God. And then those who don't even really study the word of God are getting confused because people are helping them get off. We need to read God's word for ourselves, And if we don't understand it, the Bible tells us in James that we can ask God, you know, if, if any of you lack wisdom, it said you can ask God who give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not. So in other words, God is not like us. And what do I mean by that? That means that if I know something, I kind of sit there and look at you and go, hmm, okay, so you really don't know what this is, right? And then I get kind of happy because I feel like I have some lordship over you. Because guess what? I know something that you don't. It's time out for all that. Okay, it's time for us to, you know, help that brother or sister understand and come into the knowledge. Now, I'm not saying go there and debate with them and argue with them. I don't do that. When people want to argue the Bible, guess what? You can sit there and argue by yourself because I don't have time for that. Just like I don't have time for other senseless debates. I'm, I'm learning that, guess what? I don't have time for all that. I'm not going to get into, um, it, with a lot of people, I will not discuss politics. I do not discuss race anymore. Because that is a fruitless conversation. Okay? So, what you need to know is, God is getting ready to judge the world and Jesus is soon to come. Are you saved? And guess what? When you, when you are saved, you don't go to heaven with the expectation that there's going to be a segregated heaven, okay? That's the other thing we need to, you know, I, I know we don't do it, but a lot of people do say, so, oh, well, you know, there's going to be, you know, no. Heaven is it, going to be a, a lot of different people in heaven. It's not going to just be people that look like me. It's going to be a lot of different races in heaven, okay? So that's what we have to do. We have to stop all that, okay? And we have to move beyond, you know what, I, I'm only going to witness to people who look like me. You know what? You have to witness to everybody. If, a, a, you know, if God puts a person in your way, it doesn't matter what race they are. If they, you know, if they, if, if you guys speak the same language, hey, you know what? Jesus loves you. Sometimes it's just that. Jesus loves you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who is this Jesus? That opens the door. Or they can say thank you. Or they can look mad at you. But guess what? You let them know Jesus loves you. Okay? Sometimes we're the only Bible that people read. And we have to realize it's later than we think. Let's keep going because we're almost done. And I just, like I said, I just wanted to stir up your pure minds today. Okay? Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversations and godliness? looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. This is fervent again, intense heat, okay? And nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven, look for new heavens and a new earth, where, wherein dwelleth righteousness. In other words, guess what? We'll see the earth how God intended the earth to be. We'll see the heavens how God intended it to be before it was corrupted, before sin had, had made everything fallen. We'll see it the way it was meant to be, okay? Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. So we need to be found in peace, without spot and blameless. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this platform. Father God, I ask that, that you just touch those who are watching, touch those who get to watch this video later. Father God, we ask that you continue to be a healer, Lord. We know you are yet in the healing business. We, we ask right now that you touch those that are suffering with coronavirus, Father. Lord, we ask that you deliver them, Father. We ask that you heal them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we, we pray that you give peace and comfort to those who have lost loved ones during this time of pandemic, Father. Lord, release your peace that passes all understanding. Father, if someone is unsaved, Father, prick their heart. Give them the desire to say, what must they do to be saved? In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen and amen. And it's very simple. If you're not saved, if somebody has shared this video with you and you're not saved, it's no time to get saved like right now. What does the Bible say about it? Let's find out. 
because I'm going to read it verbatim. We're going to go over to Romans, and we're going to go to Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 8 through 10. It says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Faith. We talked about that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth. Whosoever means anybody. Okay? Anybody. Any race, any color. Whosoever. Believeth. Believeth is faith. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. That's what the Bible says in John 3.16. But right here, it says the word where now we jump back to Romans, the 10th chapter, the 8th through the 10th verse. It says the word of faith, which we preach that if thou, that means you shall confess with thy mouth, that means your mouth, the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine, in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou, you shall be saved. OK, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. OK, that's what it takes. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I believe that God sent you and raised you from the dead. If you do that, if you confess with this and believe in here, you're saved. OK, that's what it is. It doesn't take, hey, I have to go to church. Yes, if you are in church and you do that, that's great. Okay, if you're in a virtual service and they make the, the, you know, they open up, you know, the doors of the church, they make the call for salvation. If you do that, great. But if you can get saved right now while you're watching this video, then once that happens, I need you to do a couple things because you just got saved. So I need you to do a couple things. I need you to find a Bible believing and a Bible teaching church. Okay, so the first one I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rattle off is Pentecostal Temple Church of God in Christ. Okay, the pastor is Pastor Kellen Brooks. That's located in Inkster, Michigan. Another one is West Willow Church of God in Christ, located in Ypsilanti. Okay, the pastor is Roland Tucson. Okay, Donald Mayshack goes to that church. I've known Donald a number of years. He's known me a number of years. He would be happy to sit there and talk to you. Okay, he'd be happy that you come. So, that's two churches. Let's go with another one. Holy Trinity Temple of Deliverance is located in River Rouge. The pastor is Michael Miles. Everlasting Word, Church of God in Christ, is located in St. Clair Shores. Okay, the pastor is Wade K. Smith. New Christ Temple, which is uh, located in Detroit. The pastor is Superintendent Loris Upshaw, Jr. Okay, Dunamis Institutional Church, located in Ypsilanti, Michigan. The pastor is Kenneth Walls III. Spirit of Praise, which is located in Ecorse. The pastor is Samuel Wyatt. You notice I gave you a couple different locations, okay? The, n number two, okay, I need you to read your Bible. And when you read this Bible, it's not supposed to be on the shelf and some type of display. It should look lived in. It should look worn. This is a good Bible I recommend. The Life Application Study Bible, King James Version. This is a good Bible. I recommend that. So, number one, we said find a Bible-believing church. Number two, you have to read your word. Number three, okay, this is about a relationship. It's not about religion. So in a relationship, what do you need to do? You need to communicate. God bless you, Dr. Thompson. You need to communicate. That's what you have to do in a relationship. So you communicate. How do we communicate with God? We communicate with God by praying. Okay? And Jesus put the model out of the prayer. It's called the Lord's Prayer. It's called, you know, it, it goes off and it says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. So in other words, Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Okay. I'm submitting to you. I'm setting the table. I'm setting the atmosphere where we can have a conversation. You don't just say, hey, God, this, that, no, 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 no. Time out. That's not how we talk to God. Okay. We have to go back and remember when we were a child. How do we address our parents? We didn't just say, okay, my name is Robert. I don't have kids that just walk with me and say, hey, Robert. How you doing today? No, 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 no. You call me daddy. I don't care if you're 40 years old. You call me daddy. Okay? You don't just say, hey, Robert. That's not how we're, we're not, we're, we're not peers. Okay? So when we approach God, you know, our father, which are in heaven. In other words, you're in heaven. You're not here on earth, but you're in heaven. You're holy. Hallowed would be thy name. In other words, I'm reverencing your name. I'm coming to you how your son showed us how we're supposed to pray. So this is how I can start my communication with you. It says, give us this day our daily bread. Not 
Give us yesterday, not give us tomorrow. Right now, it's a day-by-day journey. Give us this day our daily bread, okay? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So if there's some evil around, Father God, I need you to deliver me. I'm trusting in you. I have faith that you will deliver me, okay? That's how we set the table with God. And when we talk to God, we don't have to try to be puffed up. He knows us. It said in Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So if you already know me, God, and I'm trying to get to know you, I can be me when I'm, de- when I'm, when I'm trying to pray to you, okay? We don't have to try to pray like T.D. Jakes. We don't have to try to pray like whoever else, like Noel Jones. We can pray like who we are. Heavenly Father, this is me. I need some help. Okay, I have a family, Father. Lord, open up my understanding. Show me how to make the most out of the resources that we have. Show me how to be a priest of my home, Father. Show me. Because you said in your word that if I lack wisdom, I'm telling you I'm lacking some wisdom right now. I need your wisdom. I need the wisdom from above. I need your godly wisdom, Father, where I can operate the way you designed me to operate, okay? That's what it comes down to, dearly beloved. And I hope that you enjoyed the morning inspiration. I hope I stirred up your pure mind. And remember, God gets all the glory. This is not about me. This is not about you, but it's about Jesus. And as I always like to say, God loves you and so do I. You be blessed.